QR's got no one to blame except themselves. Paul Pluter is the whistleblower behind documents which revealed the extent of the driver shortage. It's the executives at QR who should be ashamed of themselves. They should get out of their statesman, get out of their 5 Series BMW and take the train. Since the data was collected, the Queensland Rail Saga has claimed a transport minister and a CEO. Now a new minister says she's determined to fix it. We know that this is not going to be fixed overnight. It's not going to be fixed in a couple of months. Max Futcher, 7 News. It's the long-awaited line lingering and still in limbo. Well, when you've been waiting over 100 years, it's a little bit annoying. Queensland Rail now says it warned the Department of Transport the signalling system chosen for the rail link wasn't the best for the job, ranking it lower than the others being considered. Queensland Rail says its engineers helped evaluate the signalling system in April 2014. The Newman government awarded the tender for the system just two months later. Last week, the opening of the rail link was postponed. Queensland Rail says it reiterated its concerns with the technology, but was advised that the system was significantly cheaper. The laying of the rail line, the ballast and the tracks, uh, and uh, the signalling system commenced after the change of government in January 2015. The opposition leader refusing to reveal if he'd even spoken with the former transport minister. Uh, have you spoken to Scott Emerson? I speak to Scott Emerson on many things all the time. Specifically about the Morton Bay Rail? Oh, well, I'm not going to go into all of my discussions with my shadow cabinet. Have you spoken to Scott Emerson about it? It is a yes or no answer. Well, I've spoken to Scott Emerson about many things. I'm not uh, engaging in a blame game. I've asked for an independent audit. An Auditor to General's report released in 2015 revealed there could have been $7 million saved. But at what cost? I mean, uh, the government was quite correct in putting it on hold. They didn't have a choice. The Transport Minister will announce in the coming days who will run an independent audit to establish just who's at fault for installing the bungled signalling system here at Petrie Station. There's now no commitment to a finish date. Yeah, all the things take time, I suppose, yeah. Zara Ratu, 9 News. It's simply not good enough. Those are the words the Premier has used once again to describe Queensland Rail. Commuters were left stranded this morning as a raft of problems paralysed the network. It was so bad, passengers are getting their money back. A costly apology after a Thursday morning that was nothing short of a train wreck. Those customers who, are, um, who have travelled on the Queensland Rail Network uh, from first service this morning through to midday uh, will have uh, their, um, uh, their fares refunded. With yet another Queensland Rail train fail. Passengers from the Gold Coast to Redcliffe faced hour-long delays and cancellations. I was trying to get to the city but everything was shut down and under so I had to get an Uber all the way here. Yeah, it was really annoying. I was 45 minutes late for work on my first uh, shift at the airport. I'm advised that it is uh, nothing to do with train drivers. It is track maintenance issues. It started before sunrise with a welding problem at Yoronga. A train breakdown between Currabee and Trinder Park then compounded the headache before storm damage caused signalling failures at South Brisbane and Dutton Park. Now these are very rare events uh, for our network. The Premier is furious commuters weren't told what was happening. They should have been more forthcoming with their explanation to commuters this morning and frankly it's not good enough. An increasingly common criticism from the Premier, this was her in October. It's not good enough. It's simply not good enough. Queensland Rail and Stirling Hinchliffe are taking commuters for mugs and commuters are paying the price for a government that just can't get it right. Then there was this bizarre tweet. A laughing emoticon posted around lunchtime on the official Queensland Rail account. It's under investigation. All the issues uh, that occurred this morning have been fully remediated uh, and the network is um, performing as we'd expect. Meaning hopefully a smooth ride home. Queensland's Crime and Corruption Commission has helped break open some of the state's biggest cases in recent years. Its secretive coercive hearings have forced witnesses to give up vital information, but some critics say the powers are being overused and go too far. This is one of Queensland's most secretive rooms. Those called to testify in the so-called Star Chamber have no right to silence. If they refuse to cooperate or lie, they can be jailed. They're a, uh, a very powerful tool we use, but we take very seriously uh, the use of them 
and we have to convince ourselves that there is a proper basis to use the powers. Evidence from Triple C hearings helped convict two men over the McCulkin murders, a crime that had been unsolved since the 70s. In the Tiali Palmer case, the Triple C trapped her foster family in a lie. Eventually, they gave up the killer, foster father Rick Thorburn. But while there's widespread support for the Star Chamber's use in major investigations, there's also concern the right to silence is being taken away in low-level cases. There has to be some balance, a balance between police powers, triple C powers on the one hand and civil liberties on the other. Over a decade, the number of investigative hearings have quadrupled to more than 340 a year. In 2017, Brisbane YouTuber Paul Pluter leaked top-secret documents detailing problems with Queensland rail timetables and trains. New Gen is a huge up. It's understood he was summoned to the Star Chamber and forced to reveal his source. He's since been charged with allegedly revealing he was called to face a hearing. It'd be different if you were talking about a terrorist incident, but this was talking about problems within Queensland Rail that needed in the public interest to be disclosed. People who have access to confidential information are under an obligation of trust not to disclose that without very good reason. If there's, for instance, a uh, belief that they're a, uh, they want to blow the whistle, as it were, they should come to us confidentially. The Triple C doesn't release transcripts or recordings of its coercive hearings. In many cases, even telling someone you've been summoned to testify can be an offence. Civil libertarians want the powers reined in, but the Triple C insists it's kept in check by the courts and a parliamentary oversight committee. Christian Silver, ABC News. Yeah.